Hello, 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 and welcome to another edition of Beyond the Noise, where we try to get past all the superficial conversation, the things that we can't do anything about, and go right into the solutions of problems. Today, uh, I have three special guests who have already been on the show. That, uh, this is a three-part series for them before you guys go into what what uh, what event we got coming up, Coach, Coach Jackson. The symposium. Yeah, right we'll before the symposium. Right before the symposium. So they're gonna talk to you guys a little bit about that. But before we get into that, uh, I always have to introduce the round faced Mexican girl. She is rocking with us today on the ones and twos. Uh, how are we doing today, Grace O? I'm good. How are you? <laughs> I'm fantastic. Grace O, before we get to cranking, now tell them about speed school because it looks like we still have a lot of social distancing going on and some of these schools are, aren't able to have their kiddos back in there working out. So let's see if we can help them out. Tell them about Speed School, Grace so. Okay, well, Speed School is a program designed for um, fifth grade and up. It establishes a great foundation of things that you see in movements like your warm up, so high knees, butt kicks, A skip, all those things, really getting into the intricacies of the movement in order to establish a good foundation to carry through with acceleration, deceleration, lateral movement, and um, gives you a different viewpoint and allows you to access it right from your phone. There you go, there you go. So speed is always important, especially in the topic that we have today, we're talking about recruiting today. But before we get into that, I always like to start with a, a little bit of an experience that I had uh, throughout the week. And I learned the definition, I'm 41 years old, coaches are 41 and I just learned today that there are a lot of adults, there are more adults than I'd like to admit or, or, or count that uh, they confuse uh, inconvenience with injustice. Uh, they confuse the right to do something with the right for something. Uh, entitlement is a real thing and I'm seeing it today in this great nation that we live in. So I would encourage a lot of people that I see uh, who want to go back outside and get back to the way things they think things should be is that uh, stop thinking about yourself, number one, and please have a clear understanding of uh, inconvenience versus injustice because masks are simply an inconvenience. Uh, but being shot in your home and the lawman is still not apprehended, that's injustice. So let's never forget that. Now, let's pick up uh, a little bit of our energy today because I have three fantastic coaches on the line. I have back with us Coach Van Malone. He is the assistant head coach <coughs> right there at K-State. Uh, too bad that the Horn Cross going to have to put something on him next time we see him. But he's right over there at K-State. I got Coach Tremaine Jackson over there at uh, Colorado Mesa, the head coach at Colorado Mesa and uh, Houston Tillerson's own right over there at the University of Illinois, Miss Ashton Washington. Those are our guests today and today. How are you guys and gals doing today? What's going on, ladies and gents? Doing great, doing great, great to be here. All man, good. Man, we're super excited to have you, and I want to go right into it. Tremaine, I want to start with you, okay? Today is about recruiting, so you'll have all kinds of dads and moms and moms of dads and kids and people looking for offers and young coaches and old coaches all listening to find out what's going on. Uh, coach Jackson, you're head coach at a Division II football program, right? Right. What is the, what's going on there as far as the ability to even talk to kids uh, the ability to even evaluate, can you guys have camps? What What is the, what's the temperature out there today? Yeah, well, you know, we're a little different, Greg, because we, we can sit in Mesa County on the west slope. We can have camps. Mm. Um, we can, our, our county is probably one of the most open in the whole state of Colorado. Um, our kids are around, and so there's some things that we can do here that, that uh, a lot of people can uh, where they are, but we can. We're kind of monitoring some situations on that uh, here in the near future. But right now, from a recruiting standpoint, mm -hmm. we're evaluating the class of 2021, like like everybody else. Right. And, uh, it, it, it's a little tougher because we didn't get spring the spring eval, uh, but we we run our operation no different than what you're going to hear from Coach and and, uh, and Aston and what they're doing in Division One. So we're evaluating right now. 
hopefully we'll get some TSC on campus at the end of July. I'm going to kind of run them around, but that's, that's really what's going on out here. And what's your, what's your major evaluation, too, Coach? Are you, you watching film? You watching Huddle on these kids? Yeah, yeah. It's the, it's the, for us, it's the film, and then it's the transcript. Mm. Um, you know, one thing you're going to hear that's different from me than Coach and Ashton is we can give you a full scholarship, but we're not. <laughs> and because we have to we have to make our money stretch and that you've been in division two great yes, you know, sir. Yes, where, I do. You know, we we give a kid a full scholarship, then we only got thirty five more to field the football team and so yes. uh, we've gotta find the kids that on field stand out but most of all in the classroom stand out. So that's why the evaluation for us is is really deep. Uh, with test scores and things of that nature that I'm sure we'll get into. Yes, absolutely. And then going to Coach uh, Malone, as a D1 coach, you guys have a filtering system based on a, a few things. Um, because I know in the great state of Texas, there are, I mean, amazing players all over the place. Coach, how do you narrow down your who you're looking for at certain positions? What do they have to have? And what are certain things that just disqualify them? And I mean, just measurables, whatever information that will make sense for a parent to understand. Well, we, we are, uh, just like Tremaine, we're in a situation where uh, first thing we do when we, when we go to the school is we want to know who the young man is academically. Mm -hmm. And uh, why is that important? I know there's a lot of great players from a physical standpoint when you talk about the physical attributes and I talk about that in just a second. But, but we want to know who this young man is from a character standpoint. And it fits right with what Tremaine said because if if uh, he has the character to take care of his business, if, you know, when I go talk to the, the lady in the lunchroom, she tells me that, yes, this guy, he does pick up his tray. He does clean up at the tables because because the lady in the lunchroom, she has no, uh, she has no uh, feel in the game. Right. She, it, it doesn't make her any different. If if the difference if this goes to uh, Texas or if he goes to Alabama or if he goes to Kansas State or wherever he goes, she she cares not. And so I always try to talk to those people who don't have a skin in the game uh, to find out who what what this guy's character is. And of course, you know we can all watch the video. Right, so I want to know uh, who he is as an athlete. So we we look at his ability. We, I have things the football, um, what are his what are his measurables, mm -hmm. right? <clears throat> what is his size for different positions? Uh, does he fit? Does he fit what we do mm -hmm. uh, from a from a size, speed, height, weight ratio? Right? Does he fit the, the, the skills that we're going to have him do? And then, uh, and then, does he communicate? Can he communicate? Right? And again, going back to the character uh, standpoint, you know, if, if the guy has bad character, we're going to be dealing with him a lot. Right. And no matter how fast or strong or, you know, uh, if he fits with that lately. So that's always the, the first thing that either puts him in the pot to be recruited or quickly eliminates him. Right. Wow. Ashton, and, and jumping right off of the off the back of that, I, you're you're director of high school relations. So how how involved are you in or how involved is the coaching staff with social media, looking at what a kid is posting, looking at their comments? Uh, just is that a, is that a space where you check the kid's character and what other what other avenues do you guys or would you guys use uh, over there at, at, at Illinois? So with that, um, yes, uh, social media does play a huge part in the recruiting process because that's the first place we go. Mm, and it's that's not the first place. A job and for us or wow. for me in general, first place right. we go. Wow. And, and we're not looking, you know, directly at the general page that you see, we're going through the life, we're going through the read to, mm. you want to see what you're liking, what you're reading, because some kids think, you know, if I like this, no one will see what I'm liking. Mm. So you do it uh, basically a deep dive into what, you're trying to find out what kind of person they are, even before you 
you, you get a little bit deeper into the evaluation of the athletics. Is that, is that correct? Of course. And then I agree with Coach Malone about, you know, you speaking to the lunch lady. What does this kid do off the field, right? Mm -hmm. That's your main thing, and that's part of us our off the field. You know, we got three steps. We got the academic evaluation when the transits come in. Uh, you got number two, the medical evaluation, mm -hmm. because we're spending a lot of money on these kids on our scholarships. So we got to see, you know, have you been hurt, wow. um, you know, your medical history, things like that. And then three is that character evaluation, you know, that he loves football. Mm -hmm. um, does he have a good work ethic? Does he improve the locker room? Because mm -hmm. you don't want to bring in a bad actor. I want somebody that helps improve my locker room, right? Mm -hmm. And then, of course, does he meet you or my standards as a student? So qualify with the NCAA, and that's the number one key. Mm -hmm. you got to get your NCAA paperwork done. you got to get that qualifier ID. Because that's going to be the main thing when you start getting heavily recruited. They're going to be wanting that NCAA ID. When, 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 kids, when can you get that? Like when, when could a kid, what's the earliest an athlete who, who think they may be able to compete at the collegiate level, what's the earliest they can, they can go to the eligibility center and register? Uh, my personal opinion, I say once you start your varsity season. Mm -hmm. Okay. So it's a little different for some kids. Some kids you have, uh, you know, starting varsity season freshman year, if they're blessed enough to get, you know, do that. But I say once you start that varsity season, that's when you should start filling out your NCAA paperwork. It's all online. So for parents, you know, out there trying to figure it out, it's all online. Mm -hmm. And then the NCAA, they've made it so easy that there's a booklet online for you as well. You just go through, check off the list. Um, you know, from freshman to senior year, they tell you exactly what needs to be done. And it helps. I'm telling you, it helps. Wow. Co Coach Jackson, who is your biggest, um, like, what, what, what class is your biggest uh, uh, rival in recruiting? A lot of people now, when I know, when I was, when I was at Emporia State, our, our biggest problem was JUCO, man. JUCOs would beat us in recruiting mm -hmm. all the time, Coach. So, like, yep. where you are at, at Division Two in Colorado, what are your biggest, who do you recruit the hardest against? Uh, a lot of the times it is junior college, and I coach some junior college, so I, I remember the spiel that I used to tell people. Yeah, that's where I'm going with this. <laughs> hey, 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 man, come here. If you don't go D1, you always can go D2. And uh, and because they'll be there for you. So it is junior colleges, but I, I'll tell you this way: in Colorado, it's different because Colorado is a is a heavy Division two state. Mm -hmm. uh, there's a lot of players because there's nine schools in the RMAC conference in Colorado. Mm -hmm. uh, everybody knows what Division two football is here. Right. And so there are kids whose parents played at Mason, and they want to go to Mason even though they might could go to Garden City, develop a little bit more, and then come back to Colorado State. These kids have an idea of what Mesa is. And so it, it's our biggest competition is other RMAC schools wow. where wow. we sit. Uh, but we do we do fight against those junior colleges because academically we can get a kid in that a Division One school can't. And so they that junior college sells them on that too. Wow, that's fantastic. We are here. We are here with Coach Van Malone. We're here with Ashton Washington. Coach Washington, we're here with Coach Tremaine Jackson. All uh, have different titles on different levels and uh, multiple uh, prestigious programs, programs that have done some winning over time. I want to go here, Van, with you. You've been in the game for a long time, brother, and you, you've helped develop coaches. You've helped develop players. Uh, but from all of my understanding, a young coach coming in the game, regardless of his skill level, regardless of his energy, what are the the factors in him being a good recruiter? What can he bring or what kind of things should he bring to that level? And how important is it as far as longevity in this game? That's two parts, and then I'm going to follow it up with another question, Coach, because I'm real interested in this. Well, I, I think it's important that a, a, a coach who wants to get into um, to the college level, it doesn't matter what, what level it is, uh, he has to understand that recruiting is the lifeblood of the program. So, you know, once once you understand that, then, then you understand why it's so important to to people who hire coaches to put them into the program. But, you know, one of the things that I always 
uh, have, have lived on is that recruiting is about relationships. And if you, as a, as a coach, high school, uh, and, and you want get to get on to the college level, you have to be able to, to, to prove that you can establish relationships. Well, you know what? Quite a few high school coaches uh, uh, have, have formed great relationships within yeah. their team. And, and that's what it is. When you go into a home, you have to be able to impress upon uh, a family mm-hmm. that that you will um, make their son, right? That you will take their son from one place to another place and, and bring him home uh, in a better situation than when he left. And, uh, and that's, as a, that's as a student, that's as an athlete, right? And that's as a, as a young man. So uh, to be able to express those, uh, to be able to express those characteristics, mm-hmm. you have, have to, you know, be able to express that. To be able to get a, a college job, mm-hmm. right? And like I said earlier, that is recruiting is the lifeblood of of an organization of yes. a football program. So uh, if I'm a head coach, I'm going to hire a guy onto my staff. Uh, Coaching football, yes, you definitely have to be able to uh, be a master of your of your skill set to be able to teach young men, uh, you know, within your position. But you also have to be able to articulate the vision of the program to a a student athlete, a prospective student athlete, and his family. I think it's it's vital. Right. Hey, I agree one hundred percent. So let me ask you. Based on those things, especially a young coach, with and you guys as representatives and directors in uh, Minority Coaches Advancement Association, how do how do you guys help young minority coaches understand what it takes to be a good recruiter? And then, Coach Jackson, I got a question for you after after uh, Van answers that one for me. I want you to think about this: uh, what are the what are the tools, what are the steps, what is a process that a, a young coach, a young minority coach at any school, uh, what things does he need to be good at? Like, what is he evaluating? What is he looking for? Like, just steps that he should have, he should be able to think about. So back, back, back to you, Van, what does MCAA do for coaches in, in this arena right here? Well, one, one of the things that we've, that we've already done as an organization is that we've been a part of mock interviews uh, with high school coaches uh, to be able to allow them the opportunity to to uh, do interviews, mock interviews with college coaches, mm. uh, coordinators, and and position coaches uh, to be able to take them through that process to be able to educate them on the importance of of one thing is that that recruiting piece, mm-hmm. but then also. To, to have them understand how important it is to be able to, uh, like I said, be a master of your position, you know, to be able to uh, be prepared to uh, present at clinics, yeah. to be able to, uh, to, to be prepared to be able to uh, manage your position group, which is a little bit different than, than, um, than high school because, you know, you're going to manage your position, you're not going to teach teach the class in a, in a lot of cases. But, but this is your this is your team, and you, you're going to have to be able to manage this group. You're going to have to be able to manage them academically. Mm-hmm. You're going to have to be able to manage them socially, and, and of course, you know, be able to manage them athletically. So uh, that transition, that different level of management, is mm-hmm. something I think that you know a, a prospective college coach uh, would, would definitely have to understand. So we. We have a, a, a program that, that we put coaches through to be able to help them uh, be familiar with that, that interview process uh, and, and continue with training. And that's, that's one of the things that will take place at the symposium that we have coming up soon. Right. So you guys will actually be able to discuss the recruiting arena at the symposium so young coaches be able to listen, have an understanding. Uh, uh, and this is all going to be virtual, right? Right. Yeah, and they'll, they'll be able to listen, have an understanding, ask questions, leave comments in the chat. 
Coach, let me ask you one more question, man, before I come to you, Tremaine. Is, have you seen that speaking at clinics, has, does that help in recruiting at all? To have your name, like to be able to speak in clinics and be able to drop that in, in a house, does that ever help in recruiting? Well, I think it's important because, number one, you have high school coaches who are in the audience. Yeah. And if, if a high school coach can can have the opportunity to to watch you convey a message, right, to him, or it gives him confidence that if he passes his, his player on to you, on to your program, that that, that, that uh, continuation a uh, continuation of learning, you know, that will take place. And, you know, I think I've always advised young coaches to uh, write articles, uh, put yourself in the in the scene, put yourself in that clinic circuit, mm. it gives you the opportunity to, to fine tune your craft because, you know, when you go up to a room and, and you are going to uh, stand in front of other coaches, you know, and, and teach them a scheme. Well, it, it's just, I could say, it's just another method of fine tuning your craft. Uh, and, and, and sometimes in a, in, a, in a hostile environment, because coaches have their schemes and systems, and they can challenge you much more than, than, than a young player would. Right, right. So right, right now we have uh, Coach Van Malone, we have Coach Jermaine Jackson, we have Coach Ashton Washington. Uh, Grace O, we got any questions, we got any comments? We got, we getting questions from the crowd, comments, and then uh, I'll keep blabbering my mouth. What you got, Grace O? Um, Paul Robinson would like to know what's a great grade point average a student athlete has to have an SAT, SAT, SAT and ACT score to get into a college program. So, so it's two answers to that. I know the D2, D2 doesn't operate off a of sliding scale. Is that right, Coach? Well, well we do not. Oh, so they change. Okay. Yep, they change. It. You know, it's a little too easy, Greg. You've been at y'all get all the <laughs> <laughs> so, so everybody operating off a of sliding scale. So he asked what yeah, yeah. he asked what what would be a uh, a great of course we know for, but, but what would be a leveling GPA with a test score either ACT or SAT and then I'm gonna piggyback off of that and then just for Ashton to jump in here as well how how important does uh, your class rank how important is class ranking when you're looking at giving kids money and whatnot. Well, I'll, uh, I'll start off just because mine is a little bit different than Division One. Um, you have to have a minimum of a 2.2 for us. So you're talking about you speaking then, Division Two right now. Is this is this uh, two, multiple sports or just the football? Or this is just... This is all Division Two. All Division all Two sports. Two. Okay. Any sport. So minimum of a 2.2 GPA and then the scale goes up from there just like Division One. Right. The higher the core GPA the lower the test score can be, right? So if you have a 2.2, you gotta have something like a 21 on the ACC. Yeah, I think the number's 21. Yeah. yeah, you gotta go from there. But here's the difference with Division two. If you can, if you don't meet one, the test score and the flight skill core GPA, if they don't match, as long as you have a 2.2, I can still bring you in a scholarship you, you just can't play your first year. So, and what's that called? I'm, I'm, it, it's just like the academic register rule okay. uh, that, that they probably have in Division One. Yeah. So, but I was just a little bit lower on that. End. Okay, so you, if they have a two point two and maybe didn't have the right test score, you can get them in, sign them to a scholarship, but they they lose a year basically, or a semester. But they don't lose a year. It's, a, it's automatically registered. It's an automatic register. Yeah. So now they they're it's four to get five. They now have four basically. Yep. Okay, got it. That makes Absolutely. sense. Absolutely. And then, Coach, uh, on D1, what's that look like? Coach Malone. Did we lose him? Did I lose everybody? No, we're here. I okay. think I might have lost Coach. Ask, ask okay. to go ahead. Yeah, and then Ashton, I want to know about the, uh, the the class ranking. What kind of what kind of role does the class rank play in that? So for us, we don't necessarily need to just automatically look at classwork. Mm -hmm. We start off with we start off with GPA, like mm -hmm. Coach Jackson said, and we want transcripts. So we're calling counselors, we're calling the head coaches. So the advice for that would be counselors, the head coaches, parents, if you guys are listening, make sure y'all got transcripts on deck. So that's the main thing we're asking for right now. 
uh, for specifically U of I, or University of Illinois, for scholarship guys, we like them to be over 2.5. Mm. And then for walk-ons, our GPA is a little bit higher for walk-ons. It's going to be above a 3.0. So with us being the fifth best public school in the nation, or the number 14 best public school in the nation, our standards for GPA is very, very high, wow. which makes it a little bit tougher for us to recruit. So, you know, we've had a lot of complaints, you know, within state or out of state on why it takes University of Illinois so long to recruit a kid. And so in our system, we don't necessarily like to throw out offers, I guess you could say. Right. We like to actually, you know, when University of Illinois offers you, that is a committable offer. Mm -hmm. So you're able to you know, commit to that scholarship if you want to. Rather us offering a whole bunch of kids and you can't commit when you want to commit. So you guys are very selective and it sounds like everybody else gets a three <laughs> a three point buffer. That ain't that two point two or two point five is a lot. Good God. Yeah. That's a whole lot, man. Mm -hmm. That's tough. So coach when you're when you're recruiting these kids, and this is for young coaches as well as parents, as well as minority coaches trying to get in the mix, as you can see, MCA works with you on this. Coach, what are the mo we're recruiting a kid? I got two questions. What are, you, what are your evaluation steps? So when I was recruiting, the first if if I don't like the video, I mean I I'm done. I don't care about measurables, but I want to see the video. Then I look at the measurables, and then I will go watch him, and then once he became important, his time became important. But in all of that, my main contact was the high school coach, and I needed to go see the counselor, I needed to go see his homeroom team, like I needed to go see all the people he interacted with during the course of the day. So who, who are the important people in this process, and what are the steps for a coach to take when he when he's finally getting the kid on the yard? Yeah, yeah. so you know, for, for us on this level, um, the film might not be wowing, right. uh, but if the kids got some measurables, uh, then then we'll we'll really do some digging. We'll try to get them a camp and work with it. What we like to do, Greg, throughout mm -hmm. our program, is we just don't write a kid off because some some's wrong. Right. You know, we 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 are more of a second chance, really dig dig dig, because our pool, our our umbrella and our net has the cast way wider than everybody yes. else. He thought I was yes. on the key. And so for me to write him off because he plays high uh, or he, he might not turn his feet over as fast as I'd like, mm -hmm. I gotta do some digging because as you, I, I'm from Texas and, and we all are, but yeah. uh, you know, we get spoiled in Texas because high school football and high school coaching get better mm -hmm. in Texas than a lot of places. So you and gotta really look on the rock. Absolutely. Yeah. There's places in the country where the high school coach is not even in the field. Mm. And, and the position coach has another full-time job, and they're doing this as a hobby. Wow. And so I we try not to hold that against the kid, and depending upon where that is. Now, these are a big six-day high school that just won state in Texas, and that's different. So we have to look beyond just what we see on the tape, because we're not in the, we're not, we, we can't be in the business of passing up somebody six six. Tonight. So, you so, got to at least see if he can do something. Man, that's so powerful. So, it sounds like to me your evaluation process has to be extremely selective after you pull everything into the net, or else you end up with a bunch of blanket offers. Is, is that what that sounds like? That's it. Okay. You, when you end up offering kids that, one, you might not have a chance at, because here's what, here's what you know, because you work a lot of students, mm -hmm. and I actually know this too. In, in Texas, especially, and I'm using Texas as an example. Mm -hmm. Kids are offered by people that they probably shouldn't be. I, but I would agree with that 1,000. <laughs> you, you know what I mean? Because the kid is from Dallas. Because he's from Houston. Yep. Um, and it's sad to say, but some coaches in, in this profession, they play the cash in the cow. To get one of them, they're all for the other one. And he's probably not that. And so you deal with over with guys getting offered that probably shouldn't be a little bit more developed. So we have to we have to pay attention to that kid as well as the true developmental kid uh, throughout a coach's roster on his team. Fantastic point. I'm so, I hope everybody's hearing this. Great. So what kind of questions you got over there? Okay, so there's two questions. One is mine, and one is another one to follow up, Mr. Robinson. But um, my question starts with: Do you guys know what a dreamer is? Um, it's 
in relation to DACA. And I'm asking that because have you ever had um, any athletes that you that you had wanted to recruit that were dreamers and how does that affect um, their recruiting process and their ability to play uh, at the collegiate level? Because it's not just restricted to Latinos, as you know, like um, yeah. just or anybody that is coming in and they're, they were born in this country illegally. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh -huh. I have not had any experience with, with uh, dreaming kids, but I do know this for us. If, if somebody does receive that and they can get, anytime you can get any kind of money in Division two, it's well accepted. Man. Based off of that. I'm going to that and next. So, yeah, so, you know, if, if a kid gets uh, $2,000 and, and that's, we try to treat that like a scholarship for us just to get a kid on our roster if he's got the potential. He mm -hmm. or she, you know what I mean? So, Ashton, I don't know if Ashton's had any experience with that Chicken No, sir, neither have I. You haven't? I, look, Coach Jackson and I are in the same boat with that one. Wow. <laughs> have, we found, look, have, have we found Coach Malone yet? No, we still haven't found him. Yeah, I think, I think he uh, fell off the map. But, Ashton, <laughs> 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 I want to I wanna, I wanna compare the scholarship situations, all right? And then I want you guys, both of you guys, to chime in. I need everybody that's listening to understand that when you get, because you said, you know, it's 36 scholarships in D2, is that correct? Correct. And then I know in, in baseball it's even less, but I mean, uh, Ashton, what is the, let's just pick the, there's two full ride sports, basketball and football, right? What is the yes. scholarship situation and how do coaches decide what positions get offered? I know the answer, I want you to make it clear because there are a lot of good athletes out there that are not understanding why their friend just got offered and they didn't. So I'll ask it again because I'm rambling because I'm getting excited. But like, what what's the scholarship situation? Like, how many do you have? How do you give them out? And who picks like where the needs are? How do you decide what position to get what? So each program is different. Look, mm -hmm. I don't know if my question, my answer is gonna go with your answer, right? But each college, uh, each program is different. So each year we have different number of scholarships. So that's depending on the death chart. You just gotta look, uh, you know, into that. Um, even with like my brother, for instance, I'll use him. Signed to Penn State this past December, and with him, you gotta look at who's leaving, who's coming in, who are they recruiting. Wait, wait, wait! I want you, to, I want you to stop. Say, say that again. And say it loud, because I done told, I don't know, 75,000 kids that exact statement over the past 16 years. Give it to them again, Ashley. Look, which part do you want to look All of it, dear. All of it, because all of it, I, I'm 100% in agreement with it. All of it. Okay, look, 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 let's run it back one more time. Coach Jackson, you ready? <laughs> so, with, with that, it's like I said, it's the same thing with my brother, right? Mm -hmm. I told him. We gotta we gotta look at the death chart. Yep. We gotta look who's coming who's coming in, who's leaving, different things like that. Who are they recruiting? How high are you on their yep. recruiting board, right? Mm -hmm. So if the recruiting coach that you're talking to is honest with you, which some are, and you know, sad to say, but some aren't. Mm. But you gotta understand where you land, right? And so that was the main thing in his recruiting process, and that's you know why he loved Penn State so much because he understood what he could bring to the table, mm. and he understood where he would land in that program, right? So yeah. we're, we're not saying, okay, his name's Parker. We're not saying, Parker, you know, you have a guaranteed spot when you get here at Penn State. Uh, no, when you get there, you got to work your butt off. Mm -hmm. And he goes to play a factor into this whole star system. Uh, for us, we don't necessarily look at stars. I think we, I said this the last show. We mm -hmm. don't look at stars. Mm -hmm. We would rather have a kid that has no stars. Mm, and in the east, under you, know, you know, when you get, yeah, under a rock. Mm. And when you come into a program, right, those guys, those Division One, Division Two, Division Three, and on, those guys that are already in that program, they don't care about a five-star kid that's coming in. They could care less, right? Right. When you get there, you will have to work, 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 and prove who you are and what you can bring to the table. And that's another thing that, you know, I guess you could say helicopter parents and kids that come in the programs are trying to get to a, a level of play. They got to understand that. You got to work regardless. 
And then even when you get into that program and, you know, the ultimate goal is everybody's trying to get to the league, right? Mm -hmm. I know we're not waking up at 4 o'clock in the morning, 3 o'clock in the morning to work out to be a doctor. Let's be honest. Right. So with that being said, once you get to the program, you got to work, 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 and then you get to the next level. And once you get to the NFL, it's the same thing. It's a nonstop process. It's work all day long. Mm -hmm. And that's something that you got to get in your head. And with that being said, no one should have to tell you to go outside and train, right? Mm -hmm. No one should have to tell you this is what you should do to get into a program. You should want to do that. And you should let school or education get in your way. So failing classes, having a 1.7 GPA, that's right, telling so. you that you don't want to play football. Right. That makes sense. Go ahead, Grace. So just two things. Yes, sir. Uh, you know, 85 scholarships in Division I, 63 yep. in the FCS. Uh, Stay right there, coach. Live, live right there, because I was that was the question I was going to ask. 80, 85 yeah. in D1 or FBS yeah. or Power Five yeah. and all the mid majors. How many in um yeah. in in FCS or Division One AA? Six, 63, 63 total. But here's here's what you got to know about that sixty three. Yep. Yep. You can break you can break those up to get up to eighty five on some form of scholarship. Yeah, you can take yeah. money, break up money to get to eighty five yeah. scholarships, yeah. but it's sixty three full. But so and yeah, it's not, our HBCUs, how many FBS HBCUs are there? No, zero. That now, let's live just right here for a second. I have been reading online, I don't know, for about three months now about how we should take our kids out of these power five schools or these uh, mid-majors and send them out to HBCUs. I think the gesture is great. But who's going to pay for that? Because 85 scholarships is the reason why these kids will go to Texas State before they go to Texas Southern. And that's because Texas State is going to pay for everything, and Texas Southern is going to pay for room and board. I need everybody to understand 63 and 85 is 22 scholarships, right, Cole? Yes, yeah, 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 yeah. scholarship difference. It's a 20, so, and, you, and now I got to take that difference of 22 and make it fit to 85 just to put together a quality squad. Am I right, Cole? Correct. And how many do you have at Division Two? Thirty-six. Thirty-six full rides that have to be stretched into how many? Can you stretch it into? I don't have a limit. So, so you got thirty-six for ninety-seven kids. For, right. So you can have two full ride kids and sixty-five getting books. Yeah, yep, I can. <laughs> so I, I just, <laughs> you know where I'm going there, right? <laughs> so I, and that, that's why the, the uh, FAFSA is so important. That's why Pell Grant is so important. That's why I was making the point earlier about the um, uh, about your uh, your class ranking. Because if you're not playing at the University of Illinois, which you better have a two five, because Ashley made it crystal clear, and she's going to talk to your counselors and she's going to talk to your coaches that you may not get that. That's why you didn't get that offer. So don't talk that noise to not only are you not big enough yet, but they don't have enough money for you. And it comes down to the opportunity and the amount of capital you can keep based in that opportunity. I'm talking about two seasoned professionals on the line right now giving all y'all game that you can either deny it or you can work with it and try it. I mean, uh, that's the way I feel about it. Sorry I jumped on my high horse, but I love what y'all do because I deal in kids all the time, Coach. Ashton, I deal in kids all the time, and it's like I try to burn them same statements in the head, but it's it's hard to see the field for the flashy lights. You know what I'm saying? Well, I, I think too, Greg, what, what parents need to understand is um, when, you're, when you're dealing with 63 in the FCS, the FCS is the, the, it's, it's the best of both worlds. I can give you a full or I can give you a partial. Yep. It's not one or the other like FBS and D2. So when I'm, when I'm sitting in the FCS seat, I've got 44 full scholarships that I'm going to give out, or 43, mm -hmm. and then I'm going to take 20 and break those up to get another uh, 42 mm -hmm. points, if that makes sense. To get you 85, yeah. It, that's it. So I think... Basically, the two deep is going to be on full scholarship at places that I've been. And everybody else outside of the two deep, 
is going to be on some form of a scholarship. And so that, I think parents don't really understand that when you sit down with them and they, they hear D1 because there's a, in, the, in football, in the FCS, everybody's just calling it D1 now. Right. Right. So if my if my neighbor got a scholarship to Kentucky and I got a I got a scholarship to Eastern Kentucky, mm-hmm. then parents think they're the same thing. Mm-hmm. But they're not they're, they're drastically different. And so um that that's what I think, you know, we have to educate everybody more on how things work. So let's talk about the sim well, before we get to the symposium, any other questions you got online over there, Gracie? What you got? Um one parent would like to know the the going like uh, I can't read his question right now because it disappeared. But what uh, variables you look for? So like height, weight, oh, um, what, what, and skill set. Yeah. yeah. Um, you, you, when it comes know. to a D one quarterback. So D one measurable. I'm looking for the same one actually. There you one go. Because <laughs> <laughs> you might have one in your pocket for that. Well, Tom Jackson, I'm about to say, I'm about to say, we're looking for the exact same thing. Right. It's just all about who get them first, who recruit hard. Right. We're going to fight for the very end. Well, and, and Greg, you know this. Quarterback, that, that's the guy. You've got to have the intangibles, too. Not just how you win. Mm. You got to, we like our, we like our guys, you know, in the offense that we run, we get the ball outside. We like our guys to be 5'10 or 7. Um, quick release it. We don't have a certain weight, but we don't want a chubby quarterback. Right. Obviously, we want a guy that's in shape. Uh, but but most of all, we're looking for the leadership quality. We're mm-hmm. looking for uh, when we walk in the school that the, the lady will check us in. Go, y'all here to see so and so? Everybody else here to see? And he's such a good kid. And that, 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 that's what we're looking for. Mm-hmm. Uh, more than anything, we taken a five nine kid that had all the intangibles and it paid off for us at some places out there. Mm. At quarterback, so uh, obviously you got to be able to throw the ball and, and, and command the team and things of that nature. But uh, that, that's just us. Uh. So, so it sounds to me, it sounds to me that I have possibly been compartmentalizing this thing too long. All, all coaches, like all coaches, see the same good players, right? It's sure. it, you sure. all are looking for the differentiators in the good players. So uh, it could be a good player out there that never gets recruited. He doesn't understand why. It's probably because he's just not a good kid, or he doesn't have good grades, or maybe you know he switched school six times and can't nobody find him. Is this what I'm hearing? Yeah, that's what I, I believe so. Aspen, what you think? I agree with it, and it's not that you know would you say and switch six schools. I I've had a lot of kids that switch schools multiple times, mm. and sometimes that that comes off as a bad look for right. us as college coaches. Or I can say that's my personal opinion. It comes off as a bad look because mm-hmm. it looks like he's it, looking it, for that that easy place to stay or easy place to play. It, that's correct, and it seems like you can't face adversity. Mm. You go face a lot of adversity when you get into the college field or college program. You go face a lot of adversity. You go grow as a man. Mm. And so, you know, with that, you keep switching schools, and then you switch to private school, and you switch it out. It, it just doesn't look good. Wow. But I will say, sometimes it works for kids, but that's just my personal opinion. Like I said, sometimes it just comes off with a bad look. I love it. Y'all, y'all give me some, some, give me some dimes tonight, <laughs> baby. What, what up? What you got, Grace? Okay, so you said um, it would being in the college program helps grow them into a man. How much of that step for them, would you say, falls into their hands as far as um, there's not going to be someone there anymore to fill out those things that they need, like FAFSA in their second year and things like that. How much more independent is it for them to know that they need to be when they get there? Yeah, so to me, I, I, you know, that, that's kind of twofold because, you know, we need the parents to help us before we go. Mm. Uh, we need the, the parent to start giving them some independence and, and, and showing them some things before we get them because if they come to us um, spoiled, as I, I use that word, spoiled and not knowing what to do, then we're having to step backwards. When, when, when we'd like to get them and be able to help them to continue to move forward. And, and we continue in our program to, to educate guys on every little thing, especially you know, just you can take what's going on in America today. We 
try to keep it. Our academics is not just in the classroom, if that makes wow. sense. Wow, yes. We're teaching guys life everything, situations. everywhere. Life skills, life situations. You know, the only the, the situations ain't just going to be what we call on third down. Hmm. It's going to be, hey, I'm, I'm married, I got a kid, and this happened, and I just got fired. How do I react? And mm. so that we're teaching all of that, but we need them to come with some sort of foundation from home so we can build off of that. And, and some kids don't have that, and that's fine. But we can't do that with a whole team. We can't start them all from ground zero. And so the more yeah. we can get with some type of foundation that we try to help help build them and teach them every, everything that they'll need uh, before they leave the program. Right. That makes sense. I, I gotta, I gotta ask this one. This is very important. And you guys deal with coaches at, at your school in multiple sports. What would you say, both of you? Just jump in. Uh, Ashton, I want you to go first, and then uh, Coach Jackson go behind her. Who is your main point of contact, or even basketball and tennis or softball? Who's the main point of contact? for the coach when they find some interest in the kid and they want to go hear about them, talk about them, get measurables. Number one, and number two, what kind of role do you think, limited, non-existent, whatever, does their club coaches, their personal trainers, their skill coaches play, not in the, the development of the kid, but the process? How often do you talk to, to those guys? So your points of contact and how do you go about it? That's yeah. So look, the call broke up a little bit. Can you ask that question one more time? I At, apologize. And no worries, absolutely. So who is your like when coaches go out? I'm talking about basketball coaches. You see football coaches on the road. Who is their main point of contact when they when they're trying to evaluate and get to know about a kid on the field and the class like? or what kind of athlete they are, who is their main point of contact in the evaluation process? Uh, and then what kind of role uh, do coaches, college coaches allow as far as trust in the eval from club coaches, uh, skill uh, trainers, uh, uh, personal trainers, things of that nature? Like what, who do you guys look for for the information on these kids? So, the, of course, the main contact is going to be the head coach of that program. The head coach so of the program. The, the head coach, your head football coach. Or basketball, um, just the, the main, main coach. Or, yeah. Yeah, that's going to be the main thing. Of course, it's good to have connections, you know, with trainers and 707 coaches and different things like that. But sometimes, you know, um, they might overhype the kid in the West. Mm. And the head coach of the program is going to tell you exactly, you know, I say the truth about that player because, again, they're around them all time, right? Whether that's in class, out of, on the field, things like that. So yeah. my main person that I'm going to reach out to is going to be that head coach. I want to know everything. And, you know, some head coaches, I don't, I like to say, don't make it easy to get in touch with, right? Mm -hmm. So, you know, there's a lot of schools you go to. And you, it's a hard time to even like get it by school. Mm -hmm. Dealing with receptionists, different things like that. Gate and for, you know, yeah, for mm -hmm. college coaches, it's kind of like, well, okay, well, how am I going to recruit your kids if you guys won't even let me in the building? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then back to that, you know, the seven on seven coaches and the trainers. Again, mm -hmm. those are good resources to have. Mm -hmm. Gotcha. What you got, Coach Jackson? Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm going to agree with Ashton, you know, the, the head coach is who you want to. I, I will say this, um, over the last few years, the, the in-house recruiting coordinator mm. is probably more valuable than the head coach at, at, at some programs right. just because the, the head coach has designated that time or uh, that task uh, to someone that is really familiar with the kid. Uh, know the academic situation. Right. Sometimes, uh, last year when I was in Texas State, I would just holler at a head coach just to say hello. But yeah. that recruiting coordinator is who was going to give me the just of the intro. Yeah, he gave um, me the and so, you know, so with the 707 and club coaches and things of that nature, you know, there's a, there's a rise up again.
against those guys. I don't think I don't think those people are bad. I think they intend well. I think there's a line though that they can't cross. What's that line, Coach? I think they they just if you're if you're constantly telling me I got to recruit the kids, <laughs> you want to give me back on the kids. That one thing. But if you're telling me I'm crazy if I don't recruit this kid, or when you think you know your job and my job and my situation at my school better than me, then I have a problem with that. I need to just so say. So I think if you give it, if you're giving me some information about the kid. Uh, that that's totally fine. We we as coaches, we're gonna take all the information. Mm-hmm. What we can't do is have you feel the roster as a seven on seven coach, mm-hmm. as the AAU coach. And so again, some of those guys are great coaches and, and really good. But the high school coach has been with that kid for four years, more likely than not. Mm-hmm. So because you get them every summer or every off season, that you don't get a chance to see what the kid is, mm-hmm. um, you know, from a year-round basis like that high school coach. And so our value is going to be more than the high school coach, but we'll take information from anybody. Love it. I love it. I love it. I love it. I love it. So it's really about we'll take you take the information and filter. The relationship is what matters, but the head coach is the, is the key maker. Mm-hmm. Well, yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah, and the recruit coordinator. Yeah, they they and they they've been around. I don't know, go what five or six years where recruit coordinators are valuable, valuable. They they kick out all the tape. They get run down on the kiddos. It's, it's that's a real good gig, especially if you got one that, mm-hmm. that evaluates the kids before he sends you the evaluation. Great, so what you got over there? Um, I have no questions right now from okay. anybody over here. Gotcha. So I want to ask this because I think this is uh one of the most important things is when you are when do you what's the earliest you actually truly evaluate a kid coach jackson and then uh coach washington i want you to tell me that staff over there uh would love you like what's the earliest you actually start evaluating not recruiting just evaluating a kid we're gonna we're gonna wait great until the spring going into his senior year. So you we're guys not, are going to waste a lot of time. Okay, because you're Division two, you already know what the filtering yep. process is. You you know what kind of yep. kids you want. So what they did in youth football don't matter. No, and what half the time, and you know this, it's gonna, they gonna, I'm gonna be in love with them before they in love with them. That's what I was about to say. So, you spotted that kid way <laughs> before he spotted you. Yep, yep, yep. And, and so that's just, that's just the nature of, of the lower level. Um, mm-hmm. And so we're going to wait until they're going into their senior year, the spring right before. And, uh, you know, we, and then we're letting all the bigger schools offer at sophomore and things of that nature so we know who not to waste time. Mm-hmm. So, so that's, that's, that's up. You play the filtering process. Ashton, what, what's the earliest? They actually start evaluating kids, so they start putting them on the board. Starting with what Coach Jackson just said, sophomore. That's when you start watching them deeply, right? So and of course, like he just said, we gonna know about you before you know about us. Mm. And so, so with that, go ahead. No, no, I'm I'm falling in love with what you're saying. So I, I want to make sure I'm clear. That, like at the, is it the beginning of this, like in their sophomore season or going into their sophomore, going into their junior season? Uh, I'd say towards the end, going into the junior season. Okay. What did they do sophomore year? Gotcha. Um, I, I have a lot of, you know, parents send me videos, the 707 coaches send me videos about sophomores, and we actually watch them. Mm-hmm. I know a lot, of, a lot of parents are shocked or a lot of coaches are shocked, but we do watch them. So you start evaluating them as sophomores, and Coach Jackson, you start evaluating them basically at the end of their junior year. Uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. That, that that makes that should clear the road for a lot of any parent that's listening, and how we gonna redistribute this a six thousand times. Uh, that is some of the most important information you guys have given. Let's talk about the symposium. I want you to lay it all out there. What is it about? Uh, what's your role? Uh, Ashton Tremaine, what's your role and what do you guys expect to accomplish for the MCAA symposium that's coming up in, uh, shoot, what, 10 days? 
Yeah, well, it looked 12. 12 days. Uh, it looked. Look. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> so, yeah. what? Right. So, can you go, you go ahead and answer this one? Okay. First, before me. Okay, well, my role is director of administration, and that's pretty much just a little dabble with everything. Um, the backbone, helping whoever needs help, and of course, creating new ideas for the organization and how we can improve and better our organization. Um, the symposium is coming up Friday, July 10th, and Saturday, July 11th. Of course, like you said at the beginning of this uh, interview, it is virtual, which means you can attend from anywhere, whether you're on the gym and a treadmill or you in your garden, it don't matter. You can attend. Uh, there's going to be a lot of powerful speakers that are going to be on the panel, a lot of different coaches from around the nation, and, which makes it just an overall good aspect. Um, it's going to be speaker topics, contract negotiation, skills, education about it, you know, how to negotiate your contract, what to look at your contract, and how to fully understand it, like I said before. Uh, interview techniques for Coach Malone, Seth, and Bray Hostock was you know, how to compose the interview, how to take charge of the interview, and how to work your way through it as a minority, mm. and how to be prepared for it. Uh, a lot of times, you know, we say as minorities or as African-American men and females that we want these positions or we want to be into these positions, but when the interview comes, we're not even prepared or ready for it. Mm. That's not how it should be. You should always be prepared for it. And then, of course, last but not least, how to build your brand. Mm. How can I build the brand of Ashton Washington? How can I... Uh, Coach Jermaine Jackson, Bill Grant, uh, Coach Jackson, different things like that. It's going to be, like I said, it's going to be some powerful speakers on there, and it's going to be a lot of learning to bring your notebook to the who, who do you Who do you encourage yeah. attend? Like, if you if you want to pinpoint, if you say, hey, you got to be there, who does that you look like? Um, so, it, of course, minority coaches or young coaches come into the business, but you don't necessarily have to be a minority. Well, you, can, you can come on the call. Let me ask you this. Are we talking about coaches, only coaches trying to break into college or coaches as high school coaches trying to move up into like a coordinator position or, or a, like who, who would you, like if you shot a sniper rifle, would you just say coaches trying to break into the college coaching uh, world? Minority coaches. Oh, I would. Yeah. I'm going to check. Oh, go ahead. <laughs> Well, I would I would say we've got all bases covered. Okay. okay. We're talking to all audiences from okay. the from the, the middle school coach that wants to be in high school, from the high school coach that wants to be a coordinator or prepare himself to be a uh, he or she be a high school head coach in any sport, mm -hmm. uh, all up to from the high school head coach in any sport that, that aspires to be in college, mm -hmm. and then from the college coach. That aspires to be a head coach. I mean, we got guys coming from the NFL, guys that have been major Division One head coaches in football. We've got administrators there. Uh, we we've got every base covered, Greg, that I think you can think of, and that that's what our organization is about. It's about truly advancing minority coaches uh, throughout the profession. And in order to do that, you have to give a lot of education yes. and put a lot of information out there. And I think that's what. That's what we've been able to do. Coach, once again, where can we find you guys? What, how do people pay for membership? And how do they attend the symposium? Where do they find this so they can pull out the credit cards and pull out their mice and start to click in and, and, and start learning some things? Because this information, I, I would have gone to college for the things that you guys are giving these people. This is, this is crazy. So I, I think what you're doing is, is phenomenal. Uh, how do how do people find you? Oh, let me bring you to them. So NCAA20.com, that's where you can go and you can find more information about our NCAA symposium. Mm -hmm. So on there, it's going to show you the speakers that's going to be there. I'm going to save it. Look, I'm not even going to tell you who's on there. I'm going to make you go to the website and read it. Love it. And then as far as, you know, daily posts or daily tweets, of course, Twitter. That's going to keep you active as well. And that Twitter handle, NCAA2020 or NCAA2020. That's where you can find us on Twitter. And that website, I'm going to run it back one more time, NCAA20.com. And that's where you can learn about our vision, mission statement, and, of course, find out how you can be a member. Love it. I want you, uh, Coach Jackson, I want you to uh, I want you to leave our guest with some encouraging words about uh, that athlete, their athlete, or uh, that about recruiting in, in, in this 
in today's environment, in today's climate? Yeah, well, first of all, Greg, I'll, I'll say this. On behalf of Archie McDaniel, our president and our board of directors of the UCAA, we appreciate you again <laughs> uh, for, for uh, allowing us to talk about this stuff. And then as far as the freedom goes, um, I, I, would, I would encourage parents and players of any sport to be patient. Mm. Um, don't don't just write a coach off because he, didn't, he or she didn't call you back when you wanted them to. Um, and, and, and stay working on your craft and somebody will find you. Mm. And don't be discouraged because you ain't power five or you're not going to vision one. Uh, the ultimate goal has to be receiving a assisted or a free education. There you go. And, and both while playing a sport. Because as you go to these college campuses, there's not a lot of people receiving any aid to play a sport. Right. And I think we have to realize we got to get caught up with this NIL stuff and, you know, players want to get paid. And, and that's fine. That's, I'm, that's way above my pay grade. But I do think we have to realize that it is a privilege to be able to represent an institution in a sport and be compensated for it in some type of way. And so um, mm. if you get that opportunity, you're one of the few. And so I, I would be grateful for that. Thank the good Lord. But most of all, be patient. This yeah. recruiting process is not... It's not perfect, uh, but but if you can play, you rest assured we can find you. And if you're a good football player, Colorado Mesa wants you. There you go. Coach, I, got, I got a few. I got a few. I got to talk to. I got to talk to you about. I got two. I got to talk to you about. I think that can really help. Uh, so, all right, Miss Washington, what you got? So just like what Coach Jackson just said, stay patient. Patience mm. is key. Patience. You know, is when you're supposed to be mad that you choose to understand. I'm gonna say that one more time. Patience is when you're supposed to be mad, but you choose to understand. To understand the process. Mm-hmm. And like Coach Jackson just said, with the Power Five offers, not everybody is gonna get a Power Five offer, and that's okay, right? There's mm-hmm. programs out there that you fit the criteria of what they're looking for, so don't be discouraged. And like he just said again, with the crafting. Keep crafting, keep working. I brought it up before. Someone is working when you're not working, right? Take advantage of, I don't say downtime, but take advantage of this time when everybody's in their house. Make it work, make it happen. Not everybody has personal trainers. You can do workouts on your own if you have the mindset and you're willing to do so. And again, it all falls back to patience. It will come. No doubt. I love it. I love it. I love it. I love it. Grace, you got anything? I'm good. I'm good. D1s are not having, uh, you guys extended the dead period to August 31st, right? Uh, yes, sir. So, July 31st. I mean, yeah, July, I don't know why you're saying August, July 31st. So that ends all camps that were going to happen in the summer. Is that correct? Yes. So only the D2s can, can have those ID camps. And I think that's important to know. That's why I wanted to put that out there. Uh, I want to wrap up with this. You two are tremendous. What you do for these athletes, they won't understand until they finish school. I know because I'm one of those athletes. Uh, all you want as a man, as an athlete, as a woman, as a competitor, all you want is a chance. That's all you want. Anything other than wanting that is entitled. And I think sometimes we have to realize that all inconveniences ain't injustices. I appreciate you guys being with us today. We will see you next Monday on Beyond the Note. Appreciate it, Man.